Greetings, goons, gangsters, and gamers. It's your boy, The Good Sir Knight, and we're looking at packs. Once again, I've, this is the pack review I've been uh, working on for a hot minute, because it's a bit of a more niche, unique sort of pack. There's people who know about them, there's people who know about them and love them, and then there's like the people who actually used them, and there are the guys who originally them. One of my buddies, he got a hold of the this one exactly. Let's go over. The packs are going to be the both by Eagle Industries, the original. Beaver Tail Assault Pack, which is one of the uh, really cool designs. We're going to be talking about why this, uh, why it is the way it is. <laughs> and um, then there's also the more readily available civilian version, which is the Yope Pack, with Yope being uh, presumably past tense for to yeet. And uh, yeah, you see they actually fold up pretty nice and small. So these stacks, my buddy had one for the longest time. I think I saw him with it first back in like 2013 or so. And I was like, well, that's a weird pack. <laughs> And yeah, it was, um, it's pretty cool, so from my understanding, because I didn't actually like use these when I was in or anything, it's definitely stuff I learned very much after the fact, but um, once I kind of like learned about them, looked into them a little bit, and uh, all online, people absolutely love and adore this pack, and um, yeah, I was originally only going to get one, and uh, I ended up with two, so <laughs> we're going to be talking about some of the differences so with the original design and whatnot, because we're going to begin into that. So generally, the way I've seen this pack is being used... Is generally you're wearing your chest rig, going relatively light, and you're out doing some sort of reconnaissance and stuff, and you're you're going packs pretty light. Well, night time rolls around, and um, you still need to be conducting reconnaissance, collections, operations, or sort of ordeals going on, or you need to at least you know you're not gonna just turn on floodlights and be like, hey, what's that? So you throw down your fancy Gen 3 or so night vision device, and Buddy's doing his thermal thing, but to use your night vision effectively over a long period of time, particularly for like security and stuff, you almost always want to have a bump helmet. Bump helmets are just a lot more comfortable, you can slap on a counterweight, and you can wear the nods comfortably for extended periods of time. You can also do this with a ballistic helmet, without the counterweight, but you're carrying extra weight and you're not even wearing a ballistic plate, so... Kind of a moot point, makes more sense to cut the weight and go with the bump carbon fiber helmets. And uh, yeah, that's basically what these are designed to do. So if you're running your um, chest rig, all you gotta do is throw this guy on over it and um yeah the uh you can tell this is one of the more old school ones it's got the elastic covers it doesn't have any of the cool um whatchamacallits any of the cool uh cable ma or the uh freaking strap management options so everything you do once you get the pack set up to ship out you gotta take all your straps and give them the old electric tape treatment of course it's got the chest clip too so when you're running like a eagle or lbt chest rig this actually sits very comfortably, and um, you still have access to all your essential chest rig goods. And now you just got your uh, helmet and gear in the back, we're going to be going over that in a second. But this lets you run your chest rig, and your boonie hat, or comfortable hat of choice, and then when nighttime runs around or whatever, you can throw on the actual helmet so you can see in the dark in relative comfort. Which is good, especially with uh, fancier night vision devices and whatnot. It's a really lightweight, sort of a streamlined pack. So of course, the other benefit is if you're not carrying a helmet or anything crazy, it gives you a cool, basically a massive dump pouch is attached to the back. You got your normal sort of like hydration bladder, separated by its mesh, throw in a few MREs or whatever you might need. And uh, yeah, they can throw the helmet on top of all that or any fancy gear you need and you got a cool little setup. So these bags are absolutely loved and adored. And the crazy thing is, um, as far as like the American side, with all the guys I talked to, I was like, oh hey, you guys, you know, they're like, what the hell is that? I was like, beaver tail assault pack. They're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> so, yeah, but um, then you go and you hang out with a bunch of like Japanese locals who are playing airsoft. Like, oh my god, a beaver tail, beaver, beaver tail assault pack. Those are so cool. It's like, you guys know more about this <laughs> than I was expecting. So, then of course you've got the yoke pack, which is more or less. The same with a few small differences. So let's go over the, uh, I guess you gotta go over the Eagle Tail, the uh, old school original first, because it's still in tan. So you've got all these extra little mounting systems and stuff on the outside of the pack to attach small things. You've got the um, the Molly sort of setup all over the top here, so you can uh, daisy chain gear on top of everything, make a whole mess. Um, these are actually designed with the uh, molly mounts on the back so you can attach them to plate carriers and stuff if you wanted to get rid of the straps. So if you are having to wear a plate carrier but you're not expecting anything crazy where you need a helmet or you can use your uh, boonie hats and stuff, you can throw the helmet in the back of this, mount it onto your plate carrier. And um, 
move to wherever you gotta be and then throw on the helmet before you start doing assaulting operations and all that good stuff. Or just an easy way to store your helmet in general while you carry your plate carrier in the other hand and you go doing about, going about and uh, not losing all of your stuff. So, on the outside you got the big pocket here, you got a small pocket underneath your uh, mesh for all your labels and tags and stuff. That's more or less the size of this card, just a, uh, yeah, there's like nothing too much in there. Small maps and stuff, but there's a better pocket right behind all this where you can throw in more full-size maps and all your cool stuff. You got two pockets off on the side. These are the, um, more the like top opening clamshell ones. Whereas they switch those over to the more, uh, covered sides on the, uh, yoke pack. And there's also what they call a pocket between, uh, this pouch and the inside of your, uh, main pouch. So if we pop this guy open and we're going about our business, you go, okay, hey, we're more or less where we need to be. You start popping open these clips. And there's, uh, two on the bottom down here. That helps out a lot. When you pop those open, you can reach in here, you can grab your night vision device with your attachments and stuff. And then with the more stuff you have on your helmet, the more of a pain it is. Since I've only got my uh, cool helmet here, I don't have my uh, bump or carbon fiber helmet. Get that guy out. And you can still fit everything in there with the freaking ear pro and everything. So I actually got quite a few things on my helmet and it still fits in relatively nicely. So then you go, okay, cool, take off the hat, slap on the lid, and yeah, then you throw on your night vision, pew, out of your night vision bag. And you still get your gesture, you're still doing your reconnaissance, all your cool stuff, and seeing uh, what's going on in the dark, which is cool, so. And yeah, that's the, the big thing, is being able to carry a helmet. It's the main reason to uh, use these packs. But you can also fit in all sorts of other crazy stuff. So while this is open, as you can see, it's basically your normal semi-streamlined pack with a giant mesh dump pouch on the back. And that dump pouch has a few pockets. This guy's pretty big. I just have like a uh, nice little mesh in there for cool snipers. There's nothing like too crazy going on in there. And everything you uh, daisy chain on over to the top of here is going to have a little bit of wobble. Generally, if you tighten out all these um, clips and stuff and they're not in use, they help out a lot. But there's always going to be a little bit of wobbling, but it's not too bad. But you get the cool dump pouch to help you carry all sorts of like odds and ends and crazy tall things or stuff that generally wouldn't fit in a normal pack, but now you have a cool way to sort of like strap it all down and throw it in here. So if you're not carrying a helmet, you can carry other cool things like tents. Yeah, you can easily fit a tent in there, some crazier big things. It's a decent sized dump pouch. And as you might imagine, if you could fit a helmet in it, then by that same logic, you can fit your entire head in it. Wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it, but it's something you could do, so should you choose. I'm gonna zipper this guy back up. These guys on the side, they're not um too crazy. Just pop these open, and you got uh, a little sort of like fist-sized... Ah, my pinky. My pinky locks up because it's busted. You got a little fist-sized sort of a uh, pouch in there. So you can fit something, uh, binoculars, compass, a lot of your uh, gun cleaning gear, smaller stuff like that. You got another one here. This one actually has my old gun cleaning kit in it, so. Yay! Here's that zipper I was telling you all about. Again, another pocket. This one, as you can see with the stitching, cuts off right about here. So it's not a really deep pocket, but it is a pocket nonetheless. And they got more. They really liked mounting these on old bags, didn't they? <laughs> Attachment points, you can tie in all sorts of like crazy chem lights or stuff under your helmet, batteries, whatever crazy thing you might have needed in the early 2000s. <laughs> If you pop open the main zippers here, here we got our mesh divider for your camelback. So that actually helps keep your camelback in place. This is one of the things I wish they included in the Tactical Assault Gear Combat Sustainment Pouch, or Sustainment Bag. So I got this guy, it holds a camelback just fine, but there's no mesh divider. And it's also a bit shorter, that one uses the uh, short ones. This actually uses your old school, like, longer camelback bladders. I know the, uh, the Yolt one is sold with the... Uh, the source bladder uh, reservoirs. Some people prefer source. I personally prefer Camelback, and it's uh, it's all in the taste. And of course, you got three routing systems here. You got um, one right here on the side. Put the finger in there. Yeah. And then you got one on the top. Then you got another on the other side, and that's where you can put your push your tube through for all your water and whatnot, all that crazy stuff. But the key thing is because of the uh, design going on here. You still have, if I was to fill this with water, there'd still be a good chunk of space for MREs and smaller items, radios, components, anything you might need 
mission specific. So, being an older version, this guy was made, what was this guy? Let's see, Beaver Tail, Khaki, Beaver Tail Assault Pack. This was made April of 2010. So this bag actually came off the production line when I was still enlisted, and that's been almost a decade by now, so... Pretty cool! <laughs> 2010. So yeah, this bag is celebrating, or soon to celebrate, its uh, 13th birthday. Isn't that neat? I'll have to remember to get you a cake or something. A cake that could be carried in the mesh dump out portion, so... You got the inside. Um, this does have a, was it the, sort of like plastic structural support in the back here. That's held it by. Actually, I'm going to pull the camelback out. Hope that's cool with everyone. Yeah, you see the long camelback. Whereas the tag one uses the short, this still uses the classic long, so... You can you have a bit of a longer build. You sort of moved away from that and started shape, uh, sizing everything off of the, the actual medium sappy plates and whatnot. So yeah, here we got this big old... Uh, what was it? Velcro roll. It's actually... I think it's two pieces? Or is it one? No, it's one piece. So you can adjust that to the... Needs of the Camelback. I like to just keep this one kind of like rolled up out of the way until I'm actually like using the Camelback. This uses the same sort of like crazy semi paracord sort of setup. As you can see, there's a bit of fraying going on because this and the uh, Velcro, they are not best friends. They do not particularly seem to like each other's company. So that's, well, that's another reason to keep this guy rolled up out of the way. And this guy, he'll catch on that and do his own thing. So I find that there's the... Uh, yeah, so there's your plastic backer back there. You can take it out if you so choose, but I like to like, put that in there as much as I can and uh, zip it back up to the best of my ability so it's not getting frayed. And that zipper actually goes down to about two-thirds of the way through the bag, so you shouldn't have any problem moving that around or swapping out with something tougher or anything of that nature. Plenty of space for MREs. And that's um basically the pouch. There's a... Uh, Two bits of um, little molly webbing down here on both sides, your drainage grom in the center. So you could, again, daisy chain more stuff to the bottom. You can daisy chain stuff to the top and the sides. Lots of daisy chaining going on. So of course with the Elder Skull version, you don't have any of the cool freaking uh, Velcro stuff to wrap these up. So these all have to be done with uh, classic electrical tape. You should have plenty of that. Well, key thing to do with these daisy chains is put a little old school Grimlock on there. And that Grimlock can hold all of your 550 tape, or not 550 tape, freaking. I don't think 550 tape exists, guys. If, if it does, um, send your new guys looking for it, that'd be funny. But, uh, electrical tape, so you can wrap up all your stuff. And then you can fit extra 550 cord in here. Because, let's be honest, you're always going to need 550 cord. One of the key things you're probably going to be taking, if you're going to be out any location, extended periods of time, depending on the climate, it's probably going to be a poncho. And a poncho needs to be tied into a little, uh, sort of setup, keep you protected from the elements. Because the elements kind of suck, so having 550 cord and a poncho in here with your MRE, not a terrible idea. Um, yeah, there's our eagle markings on this guy. Pretty straightforward. And, um, a lot of the mounting systems on here are made of metal. Then we moved away from that with the, uh, the yoke pack that goes into plastic. And I have an idea why, but we're going to get to that there momentarily. You got metal rings on here, the metal mounts on there. You can actually... If you so chose, entirely remove the straps so it's easier to mount directly to the pl to the uh, plate carrier, or you can um, what you call it, use different uh, aftermarket straps. Although these are pretty well padded and pretty comfortable, so that's up to you on that one. And of course, with the uh, mounting system, they don't do the cool um, was it tag blue force gear sort of a uh, mount back stuff. They use the old school buttons. And these buttons are fine. These ones, they've, uh, it's been it's almost 13 years of uh, hard use, so these guys aren't too bad. With the newer yoke pack that haven't run nearly as much, these guys come into nice little 90 degree corners, and they're like, I don't know, starched or something crazy. So when I wear this bag, not all problem. Everything generally works out pretty great, especially in a shirt. With uh, our evolved yoke pack friend here, he's using the uh, plastic buckles. And I believe the main reason they went to the uh, plastic over the metal is you can uh, relatively easily swap out new plastic if this plastic breaks. Okay, sure. But with the metal ones, they generally get scratched up and those scratches tend to rust. And I've seen a lot of uh, old surplus gear that's used metals, metal and stuff, when it got beat up a bit, instead of trying to clean out all the rust and just, uh, you know, fix it up, they let the rust kind of like corrode everything until it breaks off and they go, oh, well, 
I guess we gotta find replacements. And then you get the rust into the material, and you got rust everywhere, and it's just a really rusty situation. So I think that's one of the key reasons they want the plastic. The plastic's easier to replace with any relatively skilled, uh, not haberdasher. Haberdashers are hats, but you know. Anyone who can sew, basically. And this is all ITS Nexus, so it's generally quality stuff. Anyway, but all that got swapped over. And um, yeah, this one has all the Velcro everywhere. Lots of Velcro on everything. So these guys, once you got everything mounted up the way you want, you just tie down the Velcro. And this one, as you can see, there's really not that much shake. They did remove a lot of the uh, extra mounting options. They put a big old Eagle logo here so they can uh, represent, you can um, tell people it's Gucci and let people know that the only Gucci thing you own isn't the bags under your eyes. And they added a bit of Velcro up here. The big tag got moved down here for the Velcro. I mean, a nice little hunter's mark down there for the cool kids. And I got my uh, work motto up here on the top. They also removed the 550 cord with this, um, I don't know what type of cordage this is. It's durable enough, but they also added like uh, the heat shrink freaking uh, material on it to help uh, keep it from coming undone. And done. And uh, cause I know the older wrap up there, just the knot and stuff, that stuff can come undone and stuff. But yeah, the heat wrap, or the heat shrink or whatever, it just makes it a little bit uh, sexier. The, other than that, it's cowdy brown instead of tan, so it's uh, newer, and this guy, I saw the label for you a second ago. Where is this guy's label? I think it's in the uh, center. These are both made in the USA, which is the really, really cool part, but functionally they're mostly the same. This still has the same pocket that cuts off there. It's got the same big old dump pouch we're going to take a look at here. You've got the same... The mesh is... I think it's just newer mesh. I don't think it's uh, too much crazy. You know, the same sort of grommet set up there. you got the grommets here. And as I said, instead of the... Uh, Sort of clamshell opening, this one's got a bit of an overlap. And I do find that the overlap seems to uh, catch less, because with the clamshell setup, you got two pieces covering the zippers, and those tend to get caught in the zippers. With just one big piece that goes over it when not in use, it doesn't seem to catch as much. The zippers are still quality, I believe they're still, um... Well, it doesn't say. What does it? SC, I don't know, or BC? I don't know. I'm used to almost all the zippers being YKK. But yeah, more or less, same size design, one fist. Still the same pockets on the side, so the pocket between here, you can put anything in there you're not too worried about falling out. Daisy chained out of its mind. And uh, yeah, I haven't really decided which one I like more. I think this one's cool because it's newer, but the Velcro catches on all the more high-speed gear. And like I said, the only particular complaint I have with this guy is these guys are freaking sharpened and starched, so when you're not wearing a uh, plate carrier or a field jacket or whatever, these guys, I found, because I actually took this, we did a big uh, cleanup operation, me and one of my buddies, for a uh, Japanese patchmaker guy, and uh, yeah, these guys, the entire time, the entire trip were just digging into my freaking bag and stuff, so I actually popped them open, popped it up one, and the quick solution is to fold it in like that. You get a little fake thing, but then this guy, it's still going to rub against you, but not nearly as bad as the sharpened uh, corners here, so that's one thing I would probably, I would personally change, but that is as easy as, um, just getting something made to cover it. I found that you can usually take stuff like this and wrap it in a electrical tape, and that generally solves most of the issue. Electrical tape generally solves most of your issues, apparently, so... Same thing, still mounted to a plate carrier if that's um, still something you wanted to do. Reinforced stitching down here at the bottom. Um, let's go ahead and let's pop this guy open as you'll see. With this guy here, he's got the source bladder going on, so we're going to pull our source guy out here. Made in Israel. And it replaces the... Um, they did replace all that Velcro with a single sort of clip setup, so hopefully the... Uh, what you're using is at the right right height. You got the same sort of like improved zipper setup going on. And more or less identical plastic support backer. Oh boy, good reactions. Go me. So we can go ahead and close that guy back up. That zipper also goes down exactly two thirds of the way through, more or less, about right there. And you still get your mesh divider, tagged with care instructions. There it is, right here. Instead of the cool printed government label, you got this little Label here, pack, yote, 500, condora, and of course the keyword is 
retail. So yeah, these guys, less so designed for articles. If there is a, now there's a spot for an NSN, but there is no NSN. This one is from a uh, freaking November, no, not November, December, January. I, I know my dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah is it there, uh, December, October? Yeah, it's like October 2021. We're gonna say October 2021. And Eagle. So yeah, there you go. There you go, your care instructions. You still got plenty of room for MREs aside from the mesh. And yeah, ultimately you got a pretty solid pack. I think the um, the retail ones with the, um, you know, decade plus they've had to uh, work stuff out. They've really fixed a lot of things with the buckle breakage. This one has little plastic buckles here. That's cool. And of course with plastic buckles, like I said, anyone who can operate a sewing machine, you can enlist their help to swap everything out with metal buckles. Aftermarket repairs, but plenty of people nowadays who can do that. And of course, your only real problem is these freaking freaking pointy nerds digging into your back every opportunity. But maybe that's just me being a, a sensitive, you know what? So <laughs> ultimately, good pack. I'd probably I'm probably gonna go to one of my uh, sewing guys and actually have them do something about all this nonsense here and make it maybe a bit more comfortable to wear when you're just taking it out for normal everyday stuff. Not wearing field jackets or anything of that nature. And, uh, yeah, oh yeah, your extra material from mounting these things in there. They'll, I usually just tuck it down in here, but you can do with it what you will. And, uh, yeah, ultimately just newer, fresher, and then the uh, old school pack. So, throw your helmet and night vision in here if you're doing cool stuff for overnight. Even if you're just going, like, camping and stuff, having access... Throwing your night vision on the helmet is always going to be way more comfortable than a nightcap or a skull crusher or any of those crazy things. And yeah, you also get a cool dump pouch. So if you throw in anything like really crazy that's not too heavy and definitely avoiding sharp edges, you're not going to like tear your mesh at all. Though it seems relatively durable, but that's more or less the entirety of the review and all the stuff I wanted to cover with you guys. So if you've been looking at these, they are... Um, not as cheap as you would think that would be. You can, I, know, I think uh, Eagle actually does do discounts for uh, veterans and active duty and stuff, so it's probably not the worst. If you're just like your average Joe, though, you're probably going to pay a little bit more unless you got cool friends, so. Yeah, ultimately, really solid bag. I do like it. Um, now, if I was to have a bag that I'm just going to be, like, taking with me in general for hydration and stuff, I do still prefer the Tactical Assault Gear Combat Sustainment Pack. Bit of a bias. I might make a few mods to it to make it more doable, but as far as like doing more of the cool kid uh, chest rig stuff, this is probably going to be a lot more uh, viable of an option. And if you're not carrying a helmet, like I said, you can fit all sorts of cool things in the uh, dump pouch and uh, possibly just seal it up using a 550 cord. If you need something really crazy, you can use that 550 cord through the uh, daisy chain system and use that to fill up any gaps from side to side to help keep uh, extra stuff in there but um yeah that really just comes down to like how cool how bad of a dude are ya freaking setup so that's the review that's all i got this thing's all um pretty it's pretty easy to put back together and whatnot fitting the helmet in there is generally your biggest problem but like i said if you're using an actual bump helmet that's really only just a counterweight and nods you're not gonna have nearly as many problems fitting that in there as me with my like six thousand lights in ear pro so Hopefully this video was informative. If you've been thinking about buying one of these, well, now you know you can find the uh, old school ones on eBay pretty easy. And these guys that can be ordered factory brand new and they're pretty uh, pretty cool bags. So that's all I got. Um, cheers, stay shield for us. And uh, above all, remind yourself every day, I'm not even supposed to be here. It's my day off. So I'll catch you guys later. And um, if you have any questions about the bags, feel free to hit me up. I got... Um, a variety of crazy things I could try jamming in there. So if you have questions about like certain certain stuff fits and whatnot, we could take a look at that. But generally, nods helmet, you know, a bit of food, maybe a lot more food if you're really hungry. But yeah, cool stuff. So cheers, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.